Hello all, in this video I will be discussing some of the good coding practice when we write software for embedded system. So we have been writing some code for LPC microcontroller and we slightly improved our coding by introducing some functions, right? Initially we were writing all register configuration inside our main function itself. Then later we moved some part of it to function and instead of directly using registers here and we use functions here. So that's some kind of abstraction as you know uh, because the details of, of the registers everything is hidden by the function but by simply calling the function you can get the job done. So that's a good design practice but this is not good enough. Again, in a, in a university environment, when you are doing your class assignment or some small project, this is acceptable. But when you go to industry, this style is totally not acceptable. There, it should be more professional. Okay, so some of the good coding practices, professional style, uh, I want to discuss because this will be again useful uh, when you go for the hardware design core design course in the next semester. Now. First of all, let's uh, look at some hardware perspective, uh, then we will come to the software. So already you might have an idea now how a processor based system is being developed. It can be a microcontroller with a processor core and a lot of peripherals within the same chip or a microprocessor chip, discrete one, and you are interfacing external discrete peripherals there. It could be a system on a chip where you have a large number of peripherals, complete systems on the chip, or it can be an FPGA based, what we say like hardware, uh, software core design where you have a processor and you have your own custom hardware within the same chip. In all these scenarios, uh, the technique used is exactly same. So you will have your microprocessor core, and you will have some kind of buses and you will be putting your peripheral on this bus. Okay. Uh, and the processor, he will also have access to the memory. Usually we put it in a separate bus uh, so that he can access it much faster and all these peripherals on the uh, system bus. One uh, architecture, you may have different buses with bridges and all. It doesn't matter. So basically, uh, from the processor point of view, uh, what happens is all these peripherals, they are also memory mapped. That's what we say. Okay. So processor, he doesn't distinguish between this actual memory, this could be your RAM, and any of these peripheral. So for that, what we do is, uh, if say your address bus is a 32-bit, uh, so the total addressable range for the processor is uh, 2 to R of 32, you know, it will be like 0 to 2 to R of 32 minus 1. That's like 4G byte. That is the total addressable range for the processor. Now out of this 4G, you will not have physical RAM for 4G. Let's say you have 1G P physical RAM and the remaining addresses will be allotted for these peripherals. So every peripheral, it will be allotted a certain chunk in the, we say like the system memory map. So this is the total system memory. Uh, again, when you hear the term memory, don't think like there is a physical memory this much, no. This is the total addressable range by the processor. Uh, within that, you will have real memory and you will have peripherals. But what we'll do is, okay, we'll put the real memory, then in the remaining uh, addressable portion, we will allocate uh, each uh, each chunk to each peripheral. Let's say like I'm allotting like four kilobyte for each peripheral, okay? And we will also have some address range in this case. So each peripheral we will say it will have a base address. That means where the address of that peripheral starts. And it will also have a high address, which will be like your base address plus uh, how much memory is allotted for that peripheral. Okay, so if it is 4KB, 4KB. If it is 16KB, it will be base address plus 16. So each peripheral will have a unique base address and it will have a, a unique high address also, depending upon this range. And there won't be any overlap between the memory range for each peripheral. Now suppose if the processor wants to read or write from the memory, uh, he'll use the range allotted for your action memory. Usually that will be starting from zero. That's how you will allot. So if he is reading or writing from a memory range within 1 GB, it will be happening from this physical memory. But suppose he is reading and writing, uh, say, 1.1 G memory range, 
and if it comes within the range for this peripheral, actually he is reading and writing from this peripheral, not from the memory. But again, as I mentioned before, from processor perspective, it seems like he is reading and writing from memory itself. So this is what we call as memory mapped input output operation, where your input output devices, your peripherals, they are also mapped to the system memory map. And you can see the advantages here. This provides some kind of abstraction. Uh, when we go for the assembly coding or when you look at the processor instruction, if we have this memory mapped I.O. operation, you don't need separate instruction for accessing memory and separate instruction for accessing uh, peripherals. I with same instruction, same move instruction, you can access the memory as well as the peripheral. Uh, only thing that changes is the memory range from where you are reading. And we need some logic here, okay? So of course, we need some guy sitting in between uh, who should decide when a read or write operation comes to a uh, particular address, whether it should go to this memory or whether it should go to the peripheral or whether it should go to uh, this peripheral, there should be some guy who is deciding it. Usually that will be some kind of memory management unit come, uh, we can say some interconnect. We don't worry about it at this point, but somehow that is happening. Okay. So this is from the hardware perspective. So later when you are developing your own hardware also, uh, what you will basically do is uh, you will have a bunch of registers as we have seen for every peripheral you will definitely have a control register and a status register and usually an interrupt register also uh, then you will have a data register of course where you can read and write data so at least these many registers you will definitely have inside your hardware and you will expose only the addresses of these registers through the data sheet or whatever now those who want to use your peripheral they don't have to know about anything else but only about the addresses of these registers and what each register is supposed to do. So that's what you are going to do. And the addresses, again, for each register, you will usually start from uh, 0, 0x0, zero 0, 4, 8, something like that. Then uh, what happens is once you integrate it to the system, the actual address of each register will be like the sum of the base address given to that peripheral plus the actual address of the register. In case of LPC, uh, what happens is, since the chip is already manufactured everything uh, in the data sheet itself, uh, you will see like uh, each register has a, a big address without uh, referring to any base address. But the technique is exactly same if you are using a microcontroller or as I mentioned, you have a microprocessor and you are interfacing the register. So if you look at this uh, header file, you can see they are using that uh, style. For example, timer zero, you can see they have declared a base address for timer zero, and this is the base address e triple zero four triple zero in hex, and every other register within timer zero is referred with reference to this base address. For example, yeah, we have interrupt register here whose absolute address is zero, but from the processor perspective, now the address of this register is this base address plus zero which is base address, okay? Then we have timer control register. His actual absolute address is this base address plus four, okay? So here you can see the step. Uh, since uh, this is a microcontroller, since all peripherals are already integrated, uh, this base address is not going to change. But if you are building a microprocessor system, you only have the microprocessor, then the peripherals uh, you are adding, uh, in that case, what will be the base address of each peripheral, uh, you will be able to define it, okay? So but the style is exactly the same. Now let's come to the software development. So when you are developing software, again, uh, it will have a layered architecture. So you know, like at the uh, bottom of layer, we have our actual hardware, the real hardware, which is sitting there. And the hardware is exposed to the software only through these registers, okay? How exactly hardware is internally working, as a software developer, if you're a software developer, you don't care. You only know uh, what are the registers, what they are supposed to do. That's it, that's enough for you, and the addresses of the register. So this is some kind of abstraction, you can say. This, uh, we can say this is a kind of hardware abstraction. You have abstracted all the details of your hardware uh, through this register. On top of this, uh, you will write your first layer of software, which we usually call a driver. Okay, so driver is a very low level uh, software, usually again written 
explicitly in C or C++, that's what. Or in some case, assembly also we will use uh, for critical sections. We may use assembly also. It's a very low level uh, software. The thing is, this software, he will abstract all the information about this low level registers from the higher level softwares. Okay, so usually every driver, he will provide some functions. We usually call those functions as API, application program interfaces. So the driver, he will be providing you some functions and using that function, you will be able to access the hardware through the driver. Usually those functions will be, okay, write. You will definitely have a write function and you can use this function to write to your hardware and maybe a read function for reading from the hardware. So the upper level software, the guy who is sitting on top of it, uh, let's call him uh, application software. He will access your hardware through the driver using these API codes. So when he wants to write some data to your device, okay, again, he doesn't have to know what is the address of the register where this uh, data should be written. The only thing he has to know is what is the name of the function in the driver which is used for writing. So once he knows that, okay, he will call that function along with the data that he wants to write. So it will come to the driver. Now driver, he will know all the details of the registers. So he knows like, okay, I need to write to this data and he will know like to which register, which is the data register and he will write to that particular register. Same way, if he wants to read some data, he will just call the function read. The call will come to the driver. Driver will know which is the data register from where he has to read and he will read from there and send it to the higher level software. Uh, that is one kind of API. Again, uh, suppose this device at one time he can say accept only 32 bit data okay so you develop some hardware which can do some data processing but at one time he can accept only 32 bit data again application software he doesn't care he sends some four kilobyte uh, data to the hardware through the driver so what the driver does he knows like okay this guy can accept only 32 bit so he will divide this large block of data into chunks of 32 he will send the first 32 and he will process it and the driver will know when he finished processing either through interrupt or polling okay once he finds he finished 32 he will send the next 32 next 32 so and so forth until we finish all 4kb once we finish all 4kb a driver tell the application like okay done what is the advantage here again your hardware details they are abstracted from the application software through the driver the application he doesn't have to really know all these hardware uh, limitation. So this is the style we will always follow in industry as well as in good embedded software development. Uh, you might have noticed again for your computer whenever you buy a new hardware it usually comes with a driver software and to get the full features of that hardware uh, you will have to install that driver. Because nowadays many uh, drivers they are coming as part of your operating system also uh, as you know because some function uh, there is an understanding among the vendors, hardware vendors, like they will be consistently using same function name, same APIs for accessing the hardware. So based on that, some part will be uh, nowadays already available in the OS. If you look at OS also here, uh, he will be coming somewhere in between this one. Okay, So you will have your application software, operating system, uh, driver, then hardware. In case of our LPC, whatever we are doing in Keel, this guy is not there. We'll be directly talking with the driver when we write the driver. So uh, yeah, some part is coming as part of OS, so you can directly use those APIs. But if you want to exploit all the low level features, like you buy a printer without installing any driver, you will be able to print the pages. But if you want specific features of that hardware, like you want to see the ink level in your printer, then you will have to install the specific driver for that hardware because those specific details, those specific register addresses will be known only to the driver software. Okay, So this is the thing. So in short, uh, in this video, what we are going to do is we'll be writing a small driver. I'm going to write only a small part of this driver software for our timer. And we will have a small, very small application software sitting on top of that. 
and he'll be using this driver uh, to actually access the actual hardware which is our pipe i hope this much is clear now next one as i mentioned we are going to write a driver whenever you write a driver for a hardware generally again you can use c or c plus plus generally we use these two languages the hardware will be represented as a structure if you are using c programming language or it will be represented it will be abstracted as a class if you are using c plus uh, plus i assume not everyone knows c plus plus so we are now concentrating on c but this can be done much more beautifully in c plus plus because the uh, real essence of object oriented programming you can uh, use here maybe in a different video i will show you same thing how we can do in uh, c++ then you will appreciate uh, object oriented programming much better here so we are going to use c so in c we are going to abstract our hardware we are going to represent our hardware as a structure and i hope you know what structures are so structures they are data type in c which can store data of different type okay so this is like a package and this package can store multiple data elements and their data type can be different that is one thing and second thing whenever you write a driver usually you will always have two files one will be a header file in case of timer let me say it will be a header file called timer.h and you will have a source file with the same name with the extension .c. Okay, so the structure which is representing the hardware, we will declare it in the header file, like if you know how to use the header file standard way. So the structure will be declared here, and all the functions, all the APIs uh, for this timer, they'll be declared here. Now the definition of those APIs, those uh, functions, we'll be writing in this source code, timer.c. Then your application software, in our case, I will be using a file called maybe simply main.c. Uh, if he wants to use this particular hardware, our timer, he will have to include this header file here, uh, timer.h. Then he will have to create a variable from this structure data type. So if the name of the structure was timer, we will just have timer, timer1 or something. Then to use this actual hardware, you will use the APIs uh, defined in timer.c, which are declared in timer.h. And to all those APIs, you will be passing this uh, timer.1 variable, the structure variable, as an argument. Okay, so this is the background. I hope it will be clearer when we go and write the code. So let's go ahead and start coding. Okay, so. I'm using the same project, okay? So till now, what I did was, if you want to have a new, say, source code, uh, I always used to have a new C file, and I used to remove the C file with main function from the source code and add it here. Because in one project, uh, at a one time, you cannot have more than one main file. That's what I said. Uh, that is not necessary always. What you can do is, I just wanted to show a feature of Keel also. What you can do is, uh, you can right click this one and you can choose add group here so similar to source group one uh, you can see an option here new group here so this one uh, let me just call this new group as timer so i'm going to write all my uh, code in c and going to keep it inside this timer group which is basically a folder okay now when you compile you can explicitly say whether you want to compile this group or this group. Based on that, he will compile either this one or this one. And uh, whichever is the latest compiled, when you run your code, uh, that is the one which will get executed. OK, so let's go ahead and write. So as I mentioned before, the hardware, it will be represented as a structure uh, in my driver. OK, so first I am going to write that structure for timer and I will be keeping it in a header file called timer.h. If you are using DMA, you will keep it in DMA.h. If you are using GPIO, you will keep it in GPIO.h. Okay, so I will start a new file and 
let me save it now itself. I am just going to call it timer.h header file and let me directly add it here also. So we can say all files and okay, timer.h. Okay, so now that one is here. So let me declare my structure. Now, whenever you write a header file, this is applicable not only to embedded development, but anywhere, whenever you write a header file, usually uh, at the top, we will have something like hash if and def followed by something. It can be anything followed by hash defined. If you are using IDEs like code blocks, it will be automatically adding this line, uh, if you have noticed. And at the end, there will be like hash and diff. Okay, so I will just say this to this is to avoid something called circular reference. Those who haven't heard about it, please go and check what is meant by circular reference and why we always add uh, these three lines to your header file. Okay, so this part is uh, can be anything. Okay, since I am writing timer.h, I just chose to write timer.h. It can be anything, but uh, the word that you are using here and here, they should be same. But can be anything. So let me write that structure. So see syntax uh, struct we say, and I'm just using type default. So I'm not explaining all features of C here. Uh, that you should go and learn yourself. So this is my structure declaration. Now, what you put inside a structure? So here you will put the unique features, unique attributes of your hardware. Now, what are the unique attributes? Again, depends upon the particular peripheral for which you are trying to write the driver. Okay, so that depends. For example, if I am using a timer, you know, it can act both as a timer as well as a counter. So I can put a variable here, some uh, maybe a boolean variable which basically indicates whether this car is acting as a timer or counter that is a kind of attribute okay so that depends upon hardware and what should be exactly put there uh, that you develop over the time based on some experience but one attribute for every peripheral uh, you will always have is its base address so let me just start with one attribute here so base Address. So I have a variable here called base address, which will store the base address of my time. Okay, so I'm stopping here. So now let me go ahead and write the timer.c file, the source code, uh, which will have the APIs for this timer, the functions for this timer. Okay, so I'm starting a new one. And in the .c file, you will always include this .h file. Okay, again, reason uh, I hope you know that is the style in C. And we'll use double quote because this is a user defined header file timer.h. Okay, so one again, let me save it timer.c and let me add it now itself. Okay, so one function that you will always implement your driver is the initialization function. Okay, so whenever uh, you create a variable later from the structure to represent your hardware, uh, you will have to initialize your hardware. That could be some register configuration, uh, some operations, right? Again, depends upon the particular uh, peripheral you are using, but you will definitely have a initialization function. So let's try to write the initialization function for this timer and let's see what we will do it in. So again, it's like a normal function. Let me just call it init timer. Okay, so what all things you will do in the initialization? As of now, I can do only one thing in the initialization. Here I have created a variable for storing the base address for the timer. Okay, so when I initialize a timer, uh, whatever is the actual base address of the timer, I will store it here. Now, in LPC, you know we have four timers and they have different base addresses. Okay, so that's why I cannot directly initialize it here because I don't know which timer you are going to model, uh, for which timer you are going to use this driver. So, whichever timer you are targeting, his base address should be written here. That we can do only in this initialization. Only at the time of initialization, we will know like. 
uh, which time uh, the user is planning to use from the application software. So what value I'll put it in base address. So if you see here, uh, as I have shown you before, each timer, it has a unique base address. Okay, so which base address should be stored in that variable depends upon which timer you want to use, or ultimately the guy who is using your driver, he wants to use. So our assumption is, uh, he will tell you that information, which timer he wants to use. So we'll have a, uh, say, variable called n, we have a parameter n, which will be provided by the application software, and there he will specify which timer he is planning to use. That is one thing. Second thing, okay, as I mentioned, this base address, where is it sitting? It is sitting inside a structure. Now, you cannot directly use a structure. Whoever wants to use this structure, he should create a variable from this structure, which represents, uh, which is the software abstraction of your hardware. Again, that is done in the application software. Okay, it is done above this one. So again, I assume the application software will create a variable uh, from the structure and he will provide that variable to my driver. Now how he is going to provide it, it will be always provided in the form of a pointer. Okay, Again remember what pointers are, why we need pointer and all, I hope uh, you know, uh, otherwise you should know. And here I am assuming, okay, so the application software he has already created a timer variable and he will provide that to this initialization function. So these two information are enough uh, to initialize it. So base address, where is it sitting? It is sitting inside uh, this variable. Okay, since it's a pointer, we will use this operator. T hyphen base address equal to, okay, this value depends upon, okay, which timer you are using. Okay, so let's uh, write the different cases. I am just using the switch case here. You can use if else if also, uh, no issue. So, what are our different cases? So we have case zero. Then case one, case two, case three. These are our different cases. So if it is case zero, base address is, okay, this one. Okay. Now you can directly hard code it there. Since in case of LPC, they are already providing this header file. Otherwise we are supposed to write this header file also. Since they are already providing it, let's try to reuse it. So instead of this one, I will write this one. Again, the advantage here is if you use this style, later if you want to change the base address, you don't have to change it at 100 places because it's declared just here. You can just go ahead and change it here. That's the main advantage of this style. Now, if I directly write here, he will say like he doesn't know what it is. So we need to include that header file here also. Then he will know what it is. Okay. So case, okay. I have only one variable to initialize at this point. I haven't written anything else. So I'm simply writing the break uh, after this case. So same way, we will have different cases. Case zero, one, two, three. And let's quickly write that. Okay, so we have done all the cases. Now assume by accident or intentionally the user gave a number which is not 0 to 3. He wanted to use say a time of 5. But there is no time of 5 inside LPC. So what we should do? Uh, the initialization function should return some error condition to say like okay, uh, whatever you ask for, the initialization function failed. That's what is indicated. That's why I wrote in here, there is a return type. Okay, so that I will write under default. So default, that means he gave a number which is not zero to three, something else. I will just return uh, minus one. Again, usually in software development, a minus number represents like something went wrong. If it is successful, we usually return zero. Okay, so let's return zero here. So this completes our initialization function. Now you can have other APIs also, as I mentioned, that is peripheral dependent. For example, timer, you can have an API to start the timer, an API to stop the timer, an API to enable some capture interface, uh, set the match register. All these can be different, different function, different, different APIs. Okay, so I'm just showing one example. Uh, remaining ones you can try. For example, I want to write an API. I want to write a function for starting the timer. Okay, so let me write it void. Okay, 
the function is not returning anything uh, because I don't see any condition under which I cannot start a timer uh, once it has successfully initialized. Okay, so that's why I'm writing it as void. Again, every API, it will get that structure variable as an argument. Okay, so timer t, that represents the timer itself. This variable represents the actual timer. So what you are supposed to do? You are supposed to start the timer. For starting the timer, what we are supposed to do? For starting the timer, we need to set bit zero of this TCR register to one. That's what we are supposed to do. Timer control register. Now the problem is again here, I don't have the information which timer he wants to start, but he is giving me a variable which is representing that timer. And this function will be called only after initializing the timer, okay? And the user, he's supposed to do it like that. He's supposed to call any API only after calling this initialize API. So which timer he wants to use? Since it is already initialized, the base address information is directly available inside that, right? So if I use uh, this style, I will get the base address of this timer. If you know base address, it is pretty straightforward to get the address of TC. That is always base address plus four. So one way for writing it could be like, again, you can write a case statement here and you can write uh, if base address is this one right to this register, base address is this one right to the next register, depending upon whether base address is for timer zero, timer one, etc. Again, that is not a very good coding practice. Okay, we will try to avoid hard coding as much as possible. So here I'm going to use again uh, the factor that if I know the base address, I can just add four to that to get. Uh, the register address where I need to write. Now this writing operation, writing to register, we are going to encounter it again and again. Okay, so not only for starting timer, now for stopping timer, I will have to write. For configuring interrupt, I will have to write to some other register. So the write operation, register write operation, will be using over and over again. So what I can do is I can write it as a separate function but I won't write it as a API because that is a function I am using internally. I don't want to expose that function to the user. Okay, so whatever function I want to expose to user, okay, I will put it in the header file. For example, this init I want to export to user so that he can actually initialize it. I also want to expose this uh, timer start to the user. So that also I will put here, only the declaration definitions are here. But register write, I am going to use it as a, like a local function, internal to my driver. I will not put it there because the user, he is not supposed to know about it. So let me write that function separately. So I can simply write void reg write. And again, I am writing it as general as possible. So I am assuming for writing to a register, this function, he will get the following information. First of all, he need to know the address of the register where he wants to write. That is one thing. Second one, uh, when he is writing to a register, it may not be always 32-bit, right? Uh, we have seen many times. So he will have to use a mask to mask the uh, remaining bit. Basically, he will add with the mask. So only the bits which are supposed to change, they will all become zero and others retain their previous value because we'll be adding them with the one. And finally, the actual data, which is supposed to write. Here again, I'm giving a 32-bit data because of this masking, not all of them will get written. Okay, so this one, next, uh, I am going to declare a pointer of int type and I will initialize that pointer with this address. Okay, so you cannot directly say, uh, like our register writing, you cannot simply say like address equal to data, uh, which basically means store this to this variable. That is not what we need. We want to store this data in the register whose address is provided here. So first of all, I am putting it in a uh, pointer. Again, he will give a complaint, but it's fine. We can officially put this one so that that error goes away. Typecasting, again, if you don't know, go back and check it. Then I will say star reg address. That means the data in the register pointed by this pointer is the original data 
okay we will mask it with the mask provided and we will over it with this data this we have been doing for many times but this is a generic case so now i write for register write same way i can write register read also so register read will be returning a data so let's return integer type because it's 32 bit reg read and my assumption is okay whoever is calling this function he will tell me from which register address i need to read so same style uh, we will initialize a pointer like this and we will simply say return star reg addr so that will return the value from that register okay so now i have this function now let's use that function here timer start so i need to write so i will call this function reg write okay so where i want to write i want to write to base address whichever may be that timer okay so if it is timer 0 it is timer 0 base address will come timer 1 timer 1 base address will come of course you might have understood that if i know base address it is 0x4 uh, add to that that will give me the address of the timer control register now the mask with which I need to and operation. So of course you know like I need to change only the lowermost bit so I can mask with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, E like this. And I need to write one there. So we can simply write one here. Okay, this will do the job. But again, uh, we will try to avoid hard coding as much as possible. We have hard coding at many places here. You can see 0x4 here, this mask here, this one here, they are all hard coded, right? We want to avoid all of them. So again, in standard coding, what we'll do is all these we will uh, declare as some constant defines. For example, I'm going to use this mask for setting the start stop bit. In both cases, I need to use this mask, right? So I will go to this timer.h and at the top itself, I will say define, okay, start, stop mask is this one okay so this is the mask for uh, masking start and stop it and i will take this one and i will put here same way this one i will go here and you will have a lot of mask here uh, of course you know you need to mask a lot of bits so you will write all of them here similarly we will say like uh, start something like timer uh, set or something and there we will write like one two three four five six, seven. again i'm writing seven zeros here again only for visual appealing again usually we will use this style so that your code looks cleaner everything in 32 bits okay so i will use that one here now this one how can we avoid it okay again all the offsets of the registers we will declare here uh, that is somehow declared here but uh, it is not in a way we can directly use okay so i will show you for example uh, here hash define tcr offset i'm not saying like which timer if i know base address tcr offset is always one two three four five six seven four right so what i can do is okay base address plus tcr offset start so i don't have any uh, constants here because of this style again i can reuse this code many places okay so suppose again if i am designing a general uh, microprocessor based system if the tcr register address has changed to some other thing suppose i am des designing the timer itself i don't have to change it at many places i just have to change it here and it will reflect at every place that is the advantage now uh, i will show you one more feature maybe in c which we can use here this addition operation okay this is perfectly fine we can do like that but i just wanted to show you some feature in c uh, this operation if you wish you can write it separately uh, like a function but that is not a function that is called a macro so let me say like find effective address again those who haven't seen this style i'm just showing because if you look at any embedded code you might see this style also so this is like a function but here i'm using it with hash defined so these things we will call as macros so what happens is uh, just like our hash defines here uh, here we are already using hash defined and you know like wherever i have this 
uh, name it will be replaced by this value same thing is going to happen here also but this is more like a function so I have two parameters here base and offset and I'm just saying base plus offset okay so I will take this thing and here I will simply say okay find effective address this comma this so what happens is this will be replaced by this macro which is basically the sum of these two so here it will be the sum of these two that's what we exactly need uh, but a better style it seems so this is how you can start the timer right so this will basically set bit one in your timer control register and this should be starting the timer same way let me write a function to stop it also so of course you know what is going to happen I can again blindly reuse this now life has become much easier uh, I will just come here everything remains same but here let's say this is start timer so let's say like stop timer set and this I will go here and I will define it here stop okay this is set so here let's put and that will be like all zeros so still I will just write like this for visual appeal and that's it so we have done with our driver development okay so here okay this is not timer start this should be a timer stop and we need to put it in our header file so that someone else can use it and we have reg read and reg write these functions if you wish you can declare in a separate header file and include it here call it like okay timer uh, utility dot h or something or you can declare them in the same file maybe at the top we will declare them separately because in c you are supposed to declare them uh, before using so let's put this one so i'm not putting it in the timer dot h as i mentioned these are not apis these are some uh, utility functions I am using internally so I don't want to expose these things to the user that's why I'm not putting it in the header if you put it there nothing will happen it will work perfectly fine so this completes our basic driver development but as you know uh, you can write several other APIs so I hope you will write all of them uh, you will have to write the mask set bits for all the cases here you will have to write the offset for all the registers here then it makes the complete driver so I'm stopping here because it's a demo now I will write my application software the topmost software which is going to use it so I will start a new file here let me just call it uh, main.c okay main.c what I need is I just want to start my timer that's all I am planning to do here so since I want to use the timer I will definitely include okay timer.h here then we have our main function so as I mentioned if you want to use the timer first of all you need to create a variable from this structure okay so name of the structure is timer from that I am going to create a timer that you can do either in main or you can do outside main as a global variable again these kind of peripherals we usually declare outside main uh, and use it as a global variable you can do it internally also but better to declare it outside so this is my structure this is a variable from that structure called timer zero I'm calling it timer zero because I just want to use timer zero even if you call it by any other name it is perfectly fine so the first thing you need to do is uh, as mentioned you need to initialize it so we will use this function to do the initialization so you need to pass the address of this timer there so ampersand this one and the timer number I am planning to use timer zero zero okay so this function will initialize the base address variable inside this uh, structure variable to the base address of timer zero next what we should do we need to check whether the initialization was successful or not because his return type uh, we have already written like int because some cases he will fail if you don't do proper initialization you initialize to some other okay so we will check the status okay, status equal to so we'll declare a variable int status 
and we can check if status if successful it will be zero okay not equal to zero that means uh, initialization was failed now if your microcontroller has any lcd or monitor something you can do a print of here uh, by including the stdio dot h and say like timer initialization failed in our case okay as of now we don't have any output device other than leds interfaced okay so what i will do is i am not doing any print here i will just return minus one that means i will exit from my program because i couldn't initialize the timer now i will come here if it was successfully initialized if it was initialized okay i want to start the timer you will just call uh, timer start that also take the timer variable as an argument so we need to pass the address here again and that's it once we start the timer okay our program is over okay so this is more like your application software you can do other things also you start the timer maybe you can put a delay there then you can stop you can do input capture match everything provided you write uh, those apis also but i am again stopping here i will add that also to my source group so main and one important thing if you are using a source group separately like this remember to put this startup file this assembly script here also otherwise it won't be working so here also we'll add this lpc.s file remember to do that okay now if you simply press compile you will see he is still compiling uh, our old timer.c main.c okay he's also compiling this input capture everything uh, we don't want them so what i can do is just right click the other source group and go to options and you uncheck this option include in target build that means it will be used for compilation now now you just go ahead and do compilation uh, it is successful okay so there is no error or warning it's simply go to debug to check whether uh, code is working or not okay we have timer from our previous run i'm running everything together you can try step by step also to see like how it is going through different functions that we have written i just run everything together now you can see timer is enabled and he keeps running forever we don't have a stop condition here so it will run forever okay so i hope you have a brief idea about uh, how to write drivers for peripherals in embedded system so always keep in mind if you are writing it in c you will model your hardware as a structure uh, you will always have a init function uh, you will have other apis also and we are going to access the hardware only through these apis uh, you will have a header file representing the structure as well as the api declaration uh, you will have a source code which has definitions of your api try not to hard code anything uh, whatever you want to hard code convert them into hash defined and keep it in that header file and use it appropriately okay thank you